power spectral density is used to characterize random processes in the frequency domain. And this applies to stationary random processes. And it's sometimes also referred to as a power spectrum or sometimes even simply as a spectrum. The power spectrum, call that S sub omega, is the discrete time Fourier transform of the correlation sequence for the process. So we have that S of omega is the sum from k equals minus infinity infinity of r of k e to the minus j k omega, or equivalently that r of k is 1 over 2 pi integral minus pi to pi of S of omega e to the j k omega d omega. Now in terms of an interpretation, if we think about integrating the power spectral density from an interval, say, omega a to omega b, as I've depicted here in this graph, and we call that PAB, we would normalize this by 2 pi. Well, this quantity is the average or the expected contribution to the total power or variance that is due to the components of the random process between omega a and omega b. So if I find the area under S of omega between omega a and omega b, that's the power that this portion of the spectrum is expected to contribute to the random process. So it tells us how the contributions of power are distributed in frequency. Now the power spectral density has a number of important properties that we should re briefly review. First of all, it's a density. So the units are in terms of power per radian, if we're looking at frequency in terms of radian frequency, or if we're looking at frequency as measured in units of hertz, then the units would be power per hertz. Now because of this normalization, we can't simply substitute the relationship between, say, discrete time frequency omega and continuous time frequency in hertz, f, because the amplitudes of these various spectra for the different frequencies have to scale as well because this is a density. So when we change the units from hertz to radians, we also have to scale the amplitude so that the integral ends up staying the same. Because the total power or the variance, if the process is zero mean, is given by the area under the power spectral density normalized by 2 pi. And this is the total power. So if we're changing this to units of f, then we'd be integrating from minus f sub s over 2 to f sub s over 2, and we'd have to scale things uh, accordingly. Now because this is a power, it has to be, of course, non-negative. And it turns out that because the correlation sequence is conjugate symmetric, that implies that the power spectrum has to be real. And this is a consequence of some of the symmetry properties of the discrete time Fourier transform. And then if the process itself, x of n, is real, the power spectral density has to be even. In other words, s of minus omega is s of omega. Now there's one other caution here with real spectra is that it may be that your power spectrum, when it's calculated, say, by software like MATLAB, it may be normalized on 0 to pi rather than minus pi to pi. What I mean by that is that it may be normalized such that the total power when integrating from 0 to pi is obtained rather than minus pi to pi. Or equivalently, if we're in units of hertz, then we may be normalized using 0 to fs over 2. We look at some examples of the power spectral density. I'll start off with white noise and it, white noise has a correlation function which is say sigma squared when k equals zero the lag is zero and it's zero when k is not equal to zero so we get a graph that looks something like this for the correlation function if i take the discrete time Fourier transform i find that the power spectrum is just a constant so i have identical power in all frequencies and that's why this is called white noise, because the power is equally distributed across the entire spectrum. We can take the other extreme, where all the power is concentrated at a single frequency. And if I define a random signal s of n as a cosine of omega naught n plus phi, where phi is a uniform random variable on the interval 0 to 2 pi, and a is Gaussian with zero mean and variance sigma a squared, 
then it's fairly straightforward to show that the correlation sequence for this signal is sigma a squared over 2 times cosine of omega naught k. If we take the discrete time Fourier transform of that, we find that the power spectrum has all its energy concentrated at plus or minus omega naught, as shown here, and the area under these impulses is sigma a squared over 4. So in this case, we have something that has its energy entirely concentrated at single frequency in contrast to the case of white noise where the power is equally distributed throughout all frequencies. And as a third example, I've picked some colored noise here where I've chosen a correlation sequence that's 1 at the origin when k equals 0, and it's 1 half for k equals plus or minus 1 and 0 otherwise. And you can take the DTFT of the sequence and find that your power spectrum is 1 plus cosine omega, and that looks something like I've sketched down here. It's just a raised cosine. Well, the power spectral density has a very interesting interaction with linear time invariant systems. And here I've illustrated a case where I have a random process x of n that's being passed through a linear time invariant system with frequency response h of e to the j omega to obtain an output random process y of n. Now, if we have an input power spectrum Sx of omega corresponding to a correlation sequence Rx of k, the question is, how does the power spectrum of the output and the correlation of the output relate to those of the input? And clearly, the frequency response of the system should have an important role here, because we know that the relationship between the input and the output is given by convolution, and that says that y of n is the sum from m equals minus infinity to infinity, h of m, x of n minus m. So if I apply my definition for the correlation sequence as just being the average or expected value of y of n times y of n minus l, and I replace y of n and y of n minus l in terms of this expression for the convolution, take the expectation inside, I get an expression that looks something like this. We've got a sum from m equals minus infinity to infinity, k equals minus infinity to infinity, h of m, hk, times the expected value of x of n minus m, times x of n minus l minus k. And this quantity in the expectation simplifies to a, in terms of the correlation sequence of x, as rx of k plus l minus m. And if you take the Fourier transform of this expression and apply the standard properties, you can show that the power spectrum of the output is given by the power spectrum of the input times the magnitude squared of the frequency response of the linear time invariant system. And it's a very important property that will show up quite a bit in terms of the analysis of power spectra and modeling of random signals. I will conclude this by look, using this property it develops a power spectrum analyzer. And the idea here is if we want to know the power spectrum of some input signal x of n, we can accomplish that by passing x of n through an ideal bandpass filter that's very narrow band, and then computing the power at the output. So I've defined an ideal bandpass filter here as having unit response in the vicinity of omega c where delta omega is a very small quantity, and also unit response at minus omega c. Now, if I look at the output of that system, and I compute the power, I find, of course, that the power, py, is just the integral from minus pi to pi of sy of omega d omega divided by 2 pi. And using the fact that delta omega is very small, I can approximate this as the value Sx at minus omega c times delta omega plus the value Sx at plus omega c times delta omega, which simplifies assuming that the data is real valued and therefore the power spectrum is even. The output power is just delta omega over pi times Sx of omega c. So if I wanted to estimate the power spectrum, I could simply compute the output of this narrow band filter to get py, and then divide that 
by delta omega and multiply by pi, and I'd get an estimate of the power spectrum at the center frequency of my bandpass filter. Then to get the power spectrum as a function of frequency, all I need to do is sweep the center frequency omega c. And the output power as I sweep the center frequency is going to be proportional to the power spectrum sx of omega.